Hello everyone, my name is Elizabeth Holman. I am your Ikigai uh, life coach. Today I'd like to talk about this image. I'm sure some of you know, remember it or have seen it. Mostly we used to see it those days when we were very young in these Western uh, movies. So I'd like to talk about this image here, this old camera, and I'd like to talk about your goals. And the topic for today is to focus. Now, what have that? What has this camera? What does it remind you of? When I look at this camera, I remember when watching those movies that it was only one person that was des that was allowed to use it because he knew he was the only other part the person who knew how to use the camera. So the people during those days really relied on one person. Nowadays, we we all have cameras. We have them on our mobile phones. We buy our own cameras. So photography has really been a diversified area. But what has this camera actually, if you look at it, what does it remind you of? That this piece of cloth here, very, very funny. Uh, first of all, the cameraman is going to get you all to stand. Mostly I remember that when people were making photos, it was be like maybe the family photos where all the brothers, sisters, uncles, grandparents all sit together. So I was standing outside, either in the studio or outside. And the cameraman would always be dashing back and forth from his camera back to the people and placing everybody and asking them to stand, you know, stiff, still, smile. And every time he'd go back, go under the cloth, check again and come back. And this is what is what we, I would like to talk about, what the actions of this person is. He keeps on going back into his camera and going and trying to focus. And this is the topic that we're going to talk about today, and it's called to focus. So I'd like to share with you some of my six strategies that will help you stay focused. The most, my, one of the most important thing about staying focused is that you have to decide what is important and what you want in life. Whatever it is that you're doing, if it is your business, if it is your studies, or if it is your life in any other spectrum, you need to decide what is important and what is it that you want. If you're a student, you're studying medicine, I want to be a doctor. If you are uh, maybe a teacher, you're, you're working as a teacher, what do you want in life? Successful students. So you really need to decide what is it that you, you want in life. So the next thing is if you're really starting off, be it you're a teenager or you're starting off your new business, it is always important to narrow your list down, to narrow it down, right? You could have 10 different things that you wish you could do, but there's only one this, one body, two hands and two legs, one head. You cannot be able to implement all of them at one time. You can implement all of them, but not necessarily at the same time. So you need to narrow down, what do I want to start with? other one the other very very important and this one i tell everybody is a commitment to yourself now if you can imagine going into an african market and the african market is full of everything and somebody's shouting there fish is there mangoes are being offered everywhere people are just shouting in the market and all these people are not in the market but they're all shouting at you and you could have done this and you can do this. I did this, try this, you did that, try that. So all these people are talking to you. And every time you want to start something, you find yourself, oh, so and so said this, I stop and I do the others. You need to be committed to yourself. Because like in point one says, what is it that you want to in life? You, not me, your coach, not your mom, not your dad, not whoever your partner. It is what you, you want in life. It is what, like the Ikigai says, your reason for being. So you need to find out uh, what are those elements in order to come to point number three, to be a committed person and not to anybody, but most importantly to yourself. So you need to make a self-commitment. Sometimes it really requires to ha that you have somebody that is going to be your accountability partner. Now I know I do a lot of coaching and some of the reasons clients come to me is because they find themselves at a point where there were just too many uh, projects that they have started, want to start, will be starting and just find that they are not committed to finishing them. So you find yourself starting this project, another one, two, three, four projects, and every time you are leaving them hanging, 
you know you've got your construction sites that are always construction sites you know with all these uh signs showing construction sites simply because you are not finishing it so this house will never be completed simply because you no sooner have you started to do this you get you get to that marketplace that i was telling you you get distracted then you leave it and then you start another one so you need to have a person who is going to be uh, your accountable partner. This person can be anybody that you you trust, somebody that you respect, that you have high regard for, or you can also just hire a coach because a coach will not tell you, will, will not do it for you, but will guide you and will work with you step by step so that you are reaching that goal that you want. So the coach will be your accounting partner. I think that is also something very important. The other one is record, measure, and uh, document your progress or your process. Before you start, there's always a saying, if you fail to plan, then plan to fail. You need to record what do you want to do. And you need to measure how much time it is going to take me to get there. And then you need to also document. As I was doing this, I needed to get this license, I needed to, to, to get these docu documents presented, I needed to get a lawyer. So <coughs> all this, sorry, you need to put that to record all this because these are the processes that you're going to be taking. And once they are also, you know, they are, are, are placed in front of you, it is much easier for you to work on as opposed to they're all over in your table. If you've already placed them in that uh, in the role in which you are going to be doing those activities then you you you, you know it makes your workflow much much easier finally all this is very very nice tips but there is nothing terrible is like when you lack gratitude show gratitude it is very important to show gratitude because gratitude is what makes everything successful um gratitude also shows uh also is an indicator for your attitude appreciation all this is very very necessary because you you're going to realize that your success was going to depend on that and one thing that you about gratitude is that if you are not grateful you should remember that there's somebody out there who just like to have a fraction of what you have and they swear that with that fraction of what you have they would make the best out of it and would not be finding themselves in that position so be grateful and show gratitude for whatever that you have achieved and for whatever or whoever was there for you and that had accompanied you so that you reach where you are this gratitude is something that we have learned we have learned to not do anymore because gratitude was in those in the earlier days part and puzzle of our community it was part and puzzle of our cultures so bring back we instead back gratitude so that you are also making a bigger progress for yourself as usual i have a saying for you or a quote for you life is like a camera focus on what is important capture the good times develop from the negatives and if things don't work out take another shot just like the guy with the camera with the old camera remember him he's going to go inside come back come out He's going to make a lot of shots because you remember that those that camera, there was always something like a gunpowder when you pull it and you go and some of the children, you know, get a shock. And, you know, as a result, they look, you know, they look like children that are scared on the picture. So the cameraman had to always go back and forth again and get them placed again and start all over again. So get get focused and always take another shot. There's absolutely nothing wrong in it. And nobody goes to count how many times you made another shot unless you tell them. Thank you very much. I hope that you liked it. And I'd love you to follow me on, on Facebook. I'm also on Twitter, Instagram, and on YouTube. Subscribe, follow me so that you can always get more of my updates. Thank you very much for now. Bye.